Hi, Mark from Sharkbait here. The uh, purpose of today's video is to go over bread and butter, long range, cow fishing gear. You know, three manufacturers products are gonna be discussed today. You know, and I have to preface it by saying, I'm not a gearhead, I'm a fisherman. You know, there are other videos that will be produced. You know, Alan Hawk, for instance, you know, does some great stuff as far as taking the stuff apart and putting it back together again and describing how the pieces you know, come together, you know, technically. That's not my thing. You know, I'm a fisherman and I go by feel you know, and you know, end result. You know, what we're known for at Shark Bait you know, is kind of multifaceted. You know, bread and butter for us you know, is a long range community. You know, we're, that's what I like to do. You know, I'm also a private boater. You know, we've got many guys on our staff that are private boaters. You know, but long range is close to my heart. I know Eric down in San Diego, same story there with him. You know, and most of our clients, you know, all right, I guess many of our clients have been introduced to us you know, by getting on a long range boat and other guys that year have been purchased from us and you know, we've established a pretty good reputation in that regard. Going back to when I started this little enterprise, now 20 years ago, you know, yeah, I even had hair back then in some of the videos, <laughs> a little bit older now. Um, you know, long range fishing has evolved greatly you know, over the last few years you know, in terms of both the rods and the reels. You know, and what I'd like to do today is discuss a little bit about you know, Abbott's you know, bread and butter for cow fishing. You know, same with Okuma and same with the new pieces from Penn. You know, all of them are very, very interesting. You know, I'll start with Abbott. You know, Abbott in 2005, maybe tail into 2004, introduced you know, their, their, their big game reels. You know, they had had an EX40, you know, which was really a, a 30, 30 wide you know, piece in their line, you know, almost you know, well, maybe a year after they started, maybe two years after they really started up. But in 2004, 2005, in preparation for the 2005 season, Abbott came out with their 50s. You know, we already you know, were well established as Abbott's largest retailer. You know, we're you know, pretty closely with the, the fellas, the two brothers at Abbott. You know, they produce their gear in Southern California in the Valley. You know, and you know, we saw that they had some interesting pieces. You know, Abbott really turned the industry on its head by introducing lever drag reels with free spool that didn't have to go on to Cal, Cal Sheets, you know, at Cal Speed Shop to be tweaked for the long range fishing application. And I'll preface a little bit, long range fishing is different than your typical, you know, private boat fishing. You know, in long range side of things, we're on a boat that's essentially dead in the water. You know, you're fishing with a number of different guys uh, on the boat, you know, 30 fellas. The boat's not going to chase down a fish. You need to have a, you know, sufficient line capacity to deal with one of these, you know, big cow sized tuna on the trips that specifically target that type of fishery. And those are over 10 day trips, typically, typically. You know, we don't have the ability of, you know, you know, the boat being part of the drag system and the boat you know, helping to, you know, gain line back on a fish. You know, that's a real rare occasion you know, that uh, the big long range boats would, would send out you know, what essentially is a panga, you know, to go, you know, track down these fish when they're taking too much line. In the old days of mono, you know, we would, you know, clip onto the harness lugs, another reel, to send, you know, the primary one overboard, you know, now we're fighting the rod and the reel and the fish, you know, from the rail. And there were times where you'd have maybe three rigs out in the water, which to me is kind of scary because each of these rigs is, you know, probably a thousand dollars when push comes to shove. You know, a little bit of maintenance when you come back. You know, the use of braid, you know, which we can thank Russ Iser, you know, from Iserline, you know, for bringing to the fishing community. You know, Russ was the pioneer in that regard, but that allowed us to have reels with, which didn't have to necessarily be dunked in the water in order to gain back a, a, a cow tuna. You know, we had sufficient line capacity instead of say, you know, 300, 350 yards of 80, 100, 130 pound line at most. You know, now we've got, you know, 600 plus, you know, to work with. So, you know, a good fighting chance. And there are a few cow tuna that we can't take with six, seven, 800 yards worth of line. 600 being the benchmark, you know, for many, many years and many, many cows were taken with that sort of capacity. Um, 
Abbott, as I said, set the world, you know, it kind of upset the balance of things out there, and thank goodness for Abbott. If it had not been for them, I don't know if Pin would have survived or other companies too. There was a, a major dominance of, of a, some nameless bicycle maker out there that really was controlling things from a retail standpoint, and there wasn't room for a whole lot of other manufacturers' products. Abbott introduced a better mousetrap that gained some traction in the marketplace and allowed them to fur further develop their company, you know, which was a wonderful thing because competition certainly opens things up you know, for the consumer uh, and it forces other manufacturers to go back to the drawing boards, which is what we saw happen. Abbott's big reels had free spool and they had hydrate performance on the big game stuff. Okay, let's go back to 2005. <clears throat> we have a trip scheduled on the Red Rooster, a 10-day trip, and it was looking like we were going to have the opportunity at cow Size tuna on the 10-day. Usually a 10-day trip is a variety trip. In this instance, the 10-day trip had the potential of being big tuna, and it was. Yeah, um, well, we're Abbott's biggest customer. Abbott came, just came out with their 50 series, and so I thought, you know, I'm going to buy one and I'm going to have it on the boat because what I had before were my cow sheets tweaked, you know, Penn International 50 wide, 30 wide, I needed a 50 narrow, you know, 50 narrow being a nicer piece to fish in that application by far. You know, less tippy side to side, more balanced, we're fishing stand up, it's not in a rod holder, you know, it's, you know, the 50 narrow, 50 standard is, is the nicer piece to fish. So I bought one and then I started thinking. Well, shucks, I bought one. Here I am, Abbott's biggest dealer. I can get out here on this trip. We have the cow tuna. What happens if something goes south? So I thought, you know, I can rationalize this. <laughs> I'm going to buy two. You know, I can rig one up for sardines. I can rig one up you know, for you know, mackerel. I've got the best of both worlds. Excuse me, let me grab the phone. It's early in the morning, and that's the way things kind of work that way. <laughs> Just a moment. Okay, so I, I wound up with two Abbott 50s, rigged them both up, 130 pound. Ah, uh, geez, I'm not sure if it was um, Iser or JB uh, that we used in those days. You know, but, you know, and we caught in these cow tunas. We had a bunch. The big fish was over 300 pounds. We had a couple, I think, over 300, maybe a big 306, maybe a 303, something like that. And then we had a slew of fish 200 pounds on up. It was a very unusual trip. As Andy, the skipper, said afterwards, guys, do not think this is what a 10-day trip is like. And I'll say, you know, now we're 12 years later from that trip, and I haven't seen another bite like that on a 10-dayer. And we've had some other big fish taken on our 8 and 10-day trip, maybe up to a 283. But that's unusual, you know, very much unusual. 10-day trips and down are variety trips. That's the, that's the whole point, and that's the beauty of that type of trip instead of it being a single-purpose cow trip. But if we were on a cow trip, say 12 days, 16 days, 18 days, or a Puerto Vallarta type of trip, you know, that's, that's the expectations that we're going to be getting into some cows. You know, it's, as it turned out on that particular trip, I saw every single manufacturer's reel fail after one fish. One big fish, and they were feeling squirrely, with one exception, the Abbots. The doggone things, um, you could beat them up, you could abuse them, you could take multiple fish on them, which I did and the other guys did because there were a lot of Abbots on that boat. They, you know, the Abbott came into the market a little less expensive than other guys and they were already the darlings out there. You know, so, you know, it, it was surprising that they were the only group of reels that did not have a failure on that trip. And I mean, everybody else failed. So Abbott set the stage, you know, in 2005 as far as offering lever drag reels that did not have to be sent out to offer incredible free spool performance as well as hydrate capability. So time progresses. You know, Cal Sheets is still you know, improving other people's products, you know, primarily Penn, you know, and Abbott you know, just kept on growing you know, with their pieces. You know. And you know, Penn was going through some changes of ownership um, at about that same time before uh, when the family owned the firm. We'll, we'll come back to that, but basically there have been maybe three different owners of PIN during this time frame from let's say 2000 to 2000, well, 2018 now. You know, Okuma 
was the next company that really pushed the envelope uh, on big game reels. And that was a surprise to a lot of us. You know, Okuma's reputation was nothing to write home about. You know, in fact, it was kind of a joke you know, if we were talking 2005, 2006, 2007 probably. You know, but not far after that, uh, I noticed a series of reels that I cast from Okuma, the Kavala series, that just felt right, you know, where before their stuff did not. You know, felt right, performed well, you know, different animal, and then you know, I, I saw that, oh, okay, the guys from Tiburon are involved here. You know, they tied in together. You know, and that really you know, helped, and Okuma upgraded their staff and their commitment to fishing tackle, not just you know, the stuff going into the marts, but the good stuff with the Makaira series to follow. And the Makaira series were the next major, major innovation. You know. And they, you know, Okuma's engineers, they looked at what Abbott was doing, the features that were important, like drag performance, free school performance, you know, weight being a consideration as well. And Okuma's uh, Makaira series, especially when, when they came with the SEA versions, which were models that were more focused towards that long range fly lining a bait type of application, you know, than their standard golds, which also had great free spool. The SEAs just took it to another level. You know, the Okumas really became you know, the, the top dog on the long range side of things. Plenty of Abbots being used by guys to great effect. You know, but the Okuma pieces, you know, came on the market, and you know there was innovation apparent there. You know, they approached the, the way the reel operated differently than other companies. You know, it's a push instead of a pull, or a pull instead of a push on the way the lever works and moves the spool. Less of an issue as far as overfishing the reel at high drag setting and, and crunching the bearing or reducing free spool performance. Uh, yeah, and again, the technical guys can get more technical than I. They can talk about helical gears or whatever else. You know, it, just from a fishing standpoint, Okuma addressed the needs of anglers very, very well. You know, so as I said, Abbott still sold well, still performed well. Okuma's got a lot of attention, and a lot of the guys that were upgrading their gear or were getting into it at that point went with the Okumas. And that's where things stood. You know, it stood. You know, there were, you know, maybe some nameless other bike company came in with some pieces trying to get involved there, but really not as well received within the long range side of things. And you, know, you see that on the boats, you know, regardless of manufacturing, advertising. You, know, you don't see a lot of ads coming from, say, companies like Abbott. You know, that's not where they blow their money. You know, they're much. You know, they're a smaller firm. Not as much. You know, funding goes into advertising, and probably to a certain extent, the same with Okuma. You know, it's spread out over more categories too. You know, with a lot of freshwater stuff that Abbott doesn't participate in necessarily. You know, so now we we move up 2017. ICAST show and Penn has you know new series of internationals. My God, there must have been 20 some odd of them. You know, some stuff at low gear ratios. You know, single speeds, low drag numbers, as well as stuff that was designed, you know, for the long range community, you know, the ISX models. Now, it's interesting with the pin pieces, you know, just as a side note, you know, when you look at 30 and 50 wides, their numbers won't match up with the narrows, you know, just, you know, as a, as a point. Sometimes guys like to go with a, a wide as their kite rig or a specific application that way. The pins are, are different in that respect. You know, their 50s don't act, their 50 wides don't act like 50 narrows. You know, but having said that, in the world of long range, we like the narrow pieces. Pins big push, you know, and again, over the last 15 years or so, we've seen a few different evolutions of the internationals that really didn't hit the nail on the head. They might have been incremental improvements, but they still had a big fat arbor. They still were overweight. The bearings that came with them weren't necessarily the best from a free pool standpoint. You know, they, there were areas of criticism, and again, Cal Sheets has made, you know, quite a, his business has been based on improving upon existing manufacturers, you know, products, and pin a great source of that, I think. Yeah, and Cal does some wonderful work. But you still can't take a, you know, make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. You still may have a, a spool that's that's higher in mass, that's that's bigger at the arbor, that wastes a lot of space, and you can't get around that. You know, that's just the way that those things were made. 
2017 at ICAST and showed pieces that reflected the more current thinking. You know, and we'll, I guess maybe I should added, talk about Penn you know, little accurate, you know, Okuma. I've got my there are a, yeah. just a few, a handful of people that make things happen. You know, you know, in the case of Abbott, it's a little privately owned firm, you know. You got a couple of brothers, some family members, that's the core of it. You know, you know and they don't depend on hired help so much. You know, it, it's owners, you know, they are the two brothers that really are the force. You know, and some other, other folks that are key, but primarily that's it. Okuma, you know, you know they upgraded their staff uh, before they you know, made the push. And that upgrade, it's a small nucleus, a handful of people that really make things happen in concert with the factory you know, overseas. Okuma is a Taiwanese owned firm. You know, you know, Abbott's owned here you know, and, and produced here in California. Penn, the, the better year, you know, internationals are produced here in this country, headquartered here in this country. You know, you know, there are things that Penn's doing from a marketing standpoint that is a retailer that just downright pisses you off. You know, but I look for that to change because still within Penn you have that, a nucleus of people that have just, you know, they've survived <laughs> a few different regime changes. Again, excuse me for a minute, this time probably the wife. That's a lot of talk about basically BS. We're not here to talk about that type of stuff, we're here to talk about the gear. You know, and fundamental is that finally, you know, the guys at Penn, that, you know, part of that little nucleus that knows their butt from all the ground, those guys did look at the current landscape and they did reflect really the, the best thinking in the industry with their new reels. You know, and their new reels are very good. You know. So let's, let's take a look across the board at, at what these three companies have to offer. And again, this is the bread and butter um, of, of a long range style of fishing. And it has more applications than long range, as a lot of our clients well know. You know. But you know, we're talking long range at this point. Okay, here's our group of 50s. Abbott's are on you know, your right side here. Silver, red, black. Um, again, the Abbott reels, they were kind of unique. You know, they had a bigger handle when they came out. Kind of a T-bar style, you might say. You know, you know, although they were not T-bars. You know, but these are our Abbott pieces. And I just wanted to make sure we had silvers of each manufacturer, the Machairas. The standard color for the Machaira reels would be this gunmetal. You know, you know, that would be the standard for the SEA or their special edition long range reels. You know, and they also you know, have silver at present time and they've done a couple of little limited production runs. Silver started that way, but they've kept it in the line, which is nice. You know, I like the silver finish myself. You know, it works out well, but the gunmetal is darn good. You know, Abbott, of course, has a slew of colors available, and that, that works <laughs> in their favor and also works against them in some respects. You know, but certainly, you know, for the guys that are looking for something more custom, you know, the Abbots have an advantage, I guess, in that respect. And then we have the pin piece over here, you know, which pin you know, came out with silver a year or so ago, you know, and that's been a plus. So let's play with these three pieces here a little bit and just go over you know, the comparison of them. Um, and we want to look at a few things if we could. Um, first off, let's let's take a good peek at each of these three reels. Um, you know, manufacturers sometimes provide information that's not terribly meaningful and not terribly accurate. Um, and that was one thing that got me got my attention initially um, with the pens. And, and years gone by. Pin tended to waste an awful lot of space on their reels. Uh, the arbors were just doggone fat for no purpose, other than you know, I, I just couldn't see why. Um, you know, they've improved, but you know, if you read the manufacturer specs on the new pins, the line capacity specs just don't mount, mount up, match up with anybody out there. Um, kind of goofy uh, to show such a high capacity figure. So you think, my God, they must they must have cut the spool differently. Well, let's look at these a little more closely. Okay, here we are with the Abbott. Notice how the spool is cut. Okay, taper here. Okay, kind of flattens out. Actually, it's a pretty small arbor compared to what Penn used to do in the old days with a great big old fat arbor. Now, that was unique. Now, we look at what Okuma did. 
and basically line capacity is basically the same with these guys. Doggone close to it. Uh, again, not a really big arbor, uh, pretty doggone small. Uh, that way it's not stepped the same way, uh, but it's still that, that diameter here is about the same between the two pieces. And now we come to the pen. Well, you know what? It's no, it's no smaller than the other pieces. In fact, it's probably a little bit wider. Uh, its shape is more like what we saw in the Okuma than the Avid in terms of the way it's machined out. Um, it's not a reel that's going to offer a whole lot more line capacity than what we currently have uh, off the Makaira or even the Avid at that point. You might say there's maybe a little more wasted metal at the side on Avid, but not much. Really not much, and pins probably tapered quite nicely there too. Um, and capacity-wise, all three of these pieces, it's a pure six of one, half a dozen of the other. It just is. Um, they all are going to hold the same amount of line. Call it 600 yards nominally of 130. Um, these days, the diameters of, of the better 130s have come down, so you know potentially worse. Let's say an average of 700 yards can fit on these things, configured long range style, which means maxed up with the braid and then making use of a, uh, a, a short leader, uh, typically a wind on leader of 25 you know feet or so. You know, that can vary, but again, there's no, no no great difference in terms of the diameters of the arbors you know, or the line capacities of these three models. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. In terms of handles, handle design, T, 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 uh, that's an offset design, more like the uh, Tiburon piece was. Abbott's a little bit offset, uh, not, not the same amount, um, different number of degrees. Pin did that a little bit differently as well. But handles on all three of these pieces are quite comfortable to fish and nicely, nicely engineered. No knocks on really any of them. Any of them. Um, you know, certainly the shape is different on the pins, wider at the base. You know, I don't know. Uh, it's just a matter of personal preference, and all three of them do what they're supposed to do well from that standpoint. Line capacity, no big deal as far as the difference goes between. Okay, let's talk numbers a little bit. You know, Abbott boasts. Yeah, you know, this is what was kind of earth shattering when they came out with it. You know, 50 pounds of drag with free spool performance, you know, maxing out at 57, 58 pounds of drag. Okay, so more than 50 pounds to work with. Realistically, you know, we're fishing our drag at up to, uh, say, 30 you percent know, of whatever the line test is. Typically, you know, there aren't too many of us that are going to do you know, anything over 40 pounds worth of drag standing with the gear at the rail. you got to feel how much 40 pounds is, guys. You know, 30 pounds being average as the diameter of your line goes down on the spool and that diameter drops, you know, capacity has been paid out, your drag actually increases. So you know, that what was 30 pounds will become 35, 36, 38 depending upon how far down on the spool you are, something to recognize. You know, it's, as long as you've got your drag that you're going to be used covered plus a little bit, you know, so we're not in the red line, you know, you know that's plenty of drag. So 50 pounds of drag was earth shattering when everybody else was down in the 30s. You know, you know that's, that's plenty sufficient. You know, gearing. High gear on the Abbots is 3.2 to 1, low gear is 1.3 to 1. <clears throat> and they have some other options. Abbott's the only company out there that I'm aware of in big game stuff that actually has a three speed you know, on the model, or on the market. You know, and they do their three speeds in a number of different sizes, 30s, 50s, you know, even the HX you know, three speed, which gives you that granny gear. 1.3 to 1, that's low. You know, that's some great cranking power. So 3.2 to 1, 1.3 to 1. Manufactured stated weight, 63 ounces. Price, 550. Okay, fair price. Okuma's Makaira. <laughs> they boast 60 pounds of drag at strike, up to 60. And then 85 pounds of drag max. So they took Abbott's numbers and bumped it up a little bit. Their gearing, 3.2 to 1, same as the Abbott. And they drop it down to a granny gear of 1 to 1. To 1. So 1.0 to 1 on their 50s. <clears throat> you can pull a stump you know, at 1 to 1. 61 ounces as far as the weight, 620 bucks as far as the pricing. We come to the pin. They say 60 pounds max. I don't see a strike figure. I don't see a full figure. I see 60 pounds max you know, as far as the manufacturer's stated you know, drag curve. 
Now there are some operational differences with the pin. You can set the drag up a couple different spots. Um, just note that on any of these pieces, even if you have numbers written along the side of the reel, it's not linear. Okay, so if you move up a quarter of an inch, don't expect that to be, you know, or if you move up 25%, don't expect that to be 25% of whatever your max set drag is. It won't be. You know, so you just have to experiment with that and see at what point it comes on. Okay, but in any event, on the pin, 60 pounds max, I would guess we've got better than 50 pounds to work with at strike. Gear ratio, 3.5 to 1 on the high, so a little bit faster on the high, and then 1.3. Uh, on uh, the low gear. So 1.3 like the Avid on the low gear. Now uh, weight, uh, they claim 63 ounces and the pricing of the pin is $699. So just you know first off let's see if the if the weights kind of jive you know, from what these manufacturers are claiming. Uh, so let's play with the scale here. We'll see. I don't know if we can zoom in on what that scale is saying. Let's see if we can. Um, Okay, that's about as good as we're going to get. Now let's put that on. Make sure it's set for zero. And now let's see if we can put the Avid on there. Well, I'm getting 68 ounces. Okay, 68 is what I'm getting off the Avid 50. And the manufacturer, I believe, said uh, 63. So that's about five ounces heavy. Go back and reset it to zero. <coughs> the Mikaira, 60. Yeah, dead on 60. And the pin. What do you think? Lighter? Heavier? It's supposed to be really, really light. Let's see. Stay where she's supposed to. It looks like 63. Yeah, 63 ounces. Doesn't want to balance out quite the same way, but let's see if we can get her to. You know what? She doesn't really want to sit there. Yeah, 63.2. So, that jives. Pin says 63. That's what I got. Okuma, okay. Again, um, I adjusted the drag on all three of the reels you know, so they would be set up similarly. Um, and I'm going to just put a little sticker on each one so we can see how things move. Uh, I, I have to say, um, in the case of the uh, Okuma, um, they do have a little piece on here uh, for tying on braid I guess yeah. which I don't make use of you know some people do yeah but that maybe changes the mass a little bit on the reel let me back off the drag on all these guys make sure we're in free spool on everything you know each reel sounds a little different too I don't know if you can hear the pin it's different. No Kuma. We're quiet. The Abbott. Like a machine. Okay. Now let's just, let's spin some spools. Manufacturers can play a little different game here. Okuma uses a particular type of oil on their open bearings. Now they use an open bearing on the SCAs versus a shielded. Now I'm, I'm going to guess the pin is also open on the bearings. Again, Alan or someone else you know, can, can give us the information there, but that would be my belief. You know, Abbott's pretty proud of the grease they use. It's a kind of a reddish color, anti-corrosive type material. You know, and it looks like the Abbott slowed down first. Let's see where that little sticker went on the Abbott. Yeah, down there towards the base. So it should, you know, that's where the mass would be on that spool. 
the way it's designed. And it's still spinning. That's some great free spool. You know, that really is dandy. You know, the Mekhira, you know, low friction. It's spinning, you know, just keep on going slowly here for a while. But the pin is spinning very, very well. You know, they did their homework. Now, I don't know if the bearings are coming wet or dry at this point. We'll go ahead and dissect a little further, find that out. But obviously, from free spool performance, pin's a dandy piece. Well done. You know, certainly you know, perform well. Avid has some color options to go with, you know, which are, is always nice as far as matching up. Good solid performance, no doubt. Made in America, a wonderful thing. Priced right, you know, very aggressively priced at five and a half. The Akuma Makairas are an import piece. Very, very smooth in the way they feel and sound. You know, Excellent performance across the board. I own a couple of their Mac 10s and a 16. Love the reels. Excellent performers. Um, you know, no, no doubt about it. But I've got my Avid 50s. I don't have a reason to make a change on my own gear that way uh, at this point in time. Now, pin finally came to the party you know, with the VIFX series you know, specifically. I don't see much of a reason to have the single speed internationals in the line. That didn't make a heck of a lot of sense to me. I'm sure there are some guys that will troll that route, but it seems kind of silly. You know, and the low drag models equally don't make a heck of a lot of sense. Why do I want to fish a great big heavy reel? You know, you know, five pound reel to fish, you know, light line. I don't, I don't quite get that when there are other options out there like an Avid HX, the whole line of like a 30, 30 wide that weigh a fraction. You know. But when it comes to long range cow fishing, Pan has a piece that puts them in the running now they weren't before. Uh, you pay for it, you know, it's almost seven bills for one of these, but you know, they're nice pieces you know, and they are made here in this country. So we've got domestic and we've got offshore produced. Um, you know, any one of these three reels will, will get you, uh, you know, ready to catch a cow. To that's what I have to say. You can, uh, you know, keep your eye out for some of the other guys I mentioned, Alan, before. Um, you know, no doubt he'll bite. Me. He'll probably already has dissected the three pieces for pluses and minuses. Now, um, Alan Tanny does a similar type of stuff up in the Bay Area. Um, we'll see if, if Alan does any dissecting on the pins and what his two cents are. Now, um, you know, I'm sure those guys will have some technical stuff they can they can impart. Yeah, uh, it'll, it'll give you a little more basis, but from a feel standpoint, you know, they all feel good. Sound-wise, the Avids have a particular sound, you know, versus the other two that are quiet. You know, that doesn't bug me in the least. You know, you know it's not going to wake up the fish. It sounds like a machine you know, to me. You know, you know, but you have a range, you know, whichever one you like, we're happy to sell you. Yeah, you know, they're all good, all very, very good pieces. Thanks for watching.